Hello everybody, welcome back to another Dojo Game Review, and today we're going to talk about the lesson of Nimzovich's Pig. And this game was submitted by Dan Schmidt, playing the white pieces. These are his notes that I've captured here. And uh, very instructive mistake, uh, mistakes, but one in particular that I want to focus on because it's something that all players should kind of have in the back of their mind, and that is Nimzovich's Pig. Okay. So the first thing we got to say is that Dan plays great theory here. And um, this move, knight g4, is kind of a known inaccuracy. Uh, and uh, it's not like he's lost or anything. And then queen d1 is a fine move. I think uh, queen h4, I'm just going to mention, because you have the game Nezhmet, Dinov, Chernikov, will be one of the top 10 games of all time, in my opinion. Uh, anyways, we'll just leave that there for your own amusement if you want to look that game up. Queen d1 is fine. Snip, snop. Now, I think black should probably play knight e6, and then he's worse, but he's going to play knight e6 and d6 and try to wangle his way around. Definitely worse. Okay. So, black is poor because of white's center control, and better development. The rook on a1 is by all means now developed. And he has just the simple problem of how do I deal with the a7 pawn. Very unpleasant. If b6, which would be the move I'd like to play, then queen d5 happens. Nasty. So if I'm black, maybe d6 and hope that he can't really effectively take my pawn on a7. That's all I got for black. Already it's a little bit unpleasant. Okay, so a5, and it's a very ugly move primarily because it's a loss of time. Um, and one thing I want to stress here about the annotations is, and just the process of improving as a chess player, is this is your opportunity to write out some variations and some evaluations of what you think is going on in this position. Um, for example, excuse me, Dan mentions here, castles and bishop d4. Fine, fine. Uh, give some variations about, try to flesh it out, like you know, what's going on after that. And then also mention, I think, h4. h4 would be, I think, the way to really hurt the guy uh, with claiming that my both rooks will be developed where they stand. Very promising position for white. Now, this position goes downhill, and I want to stress this, how it goes downhill is all a little bit, uh, very much about Nimzovich's pig, which I'm going to explain in a second. So, knight d5, and now e6. Okay, now what I'm going to, now, Dan doesn't write this, but what I think happened was that he maybe initially thought, and this is really important to write down in the notes, that he was going to have bishop b6 and then probably realize that for queen h4 things aren't so simple anymore because the knight is hitting the... Uh, he's got two problems, the knight and the pawn on e4. Now this can happen to anybody, okay, this kind of tactical thing. Um, you miss something, okay, but still really important not to play knight b6 here. What can you do? Just go back. You're still doing fantastic. e6, really not the greatest thing because now d6 doesn't get the bishop out either. So this position, you're golden. You're still golden in this position, okay? And what's going to happen is knight b6, rook a6, and then a chess crime. This one really hurt my soul, Dan. I just want you to appreciate it. If you understand how much this hurt my soul, I think it will hurt, uh, improve your chess. Because here's the story of Nimzovich's pig. A lot of times when uh, people think about the market value of a pig, this is what Nimzovich says, they think about just like what is apparent face value work is, value is, without thinking about, say, the time it took, time and money it took for the farmer to build a fence, the time and money it took the farmer to feed the pigs, the time and money it took to protect the pig from outside predators. All this stuff is going on with the poor pig. There's a lot of value going on to this pig. And what do we have? We have 
knight c3, right? Knight c3, number one. Knight d5, number two. The, the first one is the fence. The second one is the money spent to raise the pig and to feed it. This one for outside predators messing with it. You can still go back to a4. There was no need to take the thing. Then there was even a negative time because black owed you a move either b6 or d6 or something to get the bishop out in the first place. So all of these moves were behind the value of the pig. Now, a lot of people, let me just make a side reference. A lot of people are confused about Nibzovich because they're like, oh, he's old-fashioned and I don't understand why he's the greatest author of all time. If you come up with a metaphor like a pig describing why knight takes c8 is a mistake that applies almost a hundred years after you wrote the thing, then you are one of the greats. <laughs> and then you are a good chess writer. Okay, so now, next phase of the game. Black is better. Why? Because he's got extra time and we, but white has to deal with d2. Um, right, okay, so now we're in a different phase. A c3, okay, let's say that that was necessary. Queen c6, okay, castles, and now rook d8. Now, one of the things that's interesting to me about this is what I sense happens here from Black's point of view is he's going to say, I've got a weak pawn on d7, and I'm going to fix it by playing d5. And what he's not going to be thinking of is, hey, my rook on a6, it needs to be involved. And um, I think... Uh, a more dynamic plan for black would be to play, uh, excuse me, b5, and then make white think about whether we're going to play b4 or a4, then we can play queen b7. There's no rush to be doing anything with the pawn on d7, okay? So what we're going to see is black now is going to engage in some pawns or people kind of thinking here. And again, I want him to play b5. And so he fixes his rook, but now we're quicker on the jump on the d file because the a6 rook needs to be fixed. So all of a sudden, white's maybe still a little bit, I still might have some problems, but he's fundamentally okay. Okay, queen d3, now move uh, in principle that I like from black, h5. Okay, good. Queen d7, good. Queen e4, queen d3, queen c6. Should white take a draw? Absolutely, absolutely. And let's talk about why this is a very dangerous position for white. It's because the black king is better. He's got more pawns in front of it. And here, the only real problem that black has is the a8 rook. So uh, the most natural move in my mind for black is to play a4 here. Notice, I'm not concerned about undoubling the white pawns. The rook wants to be active. Another move that is uh, maybe spicy for black is to play h4 at some point. But I like a4 better just to fix the rook first, but then we can definitely think about h4 in the future. Rook c8 didn't make any sense. Queen d7. Snip. Okay. B takes. Did I understand why this was a great move? Not, not necessarily, okay? Uh, bishop b6. Okay, and let's talk about this variation that you wrote here. Rook a1, rook b8, rook snip, rook takes. And why rook a2? Let's just play bishop c1, right? And uh, honestly, I'd rather be white. Why? Because your king has a simple dream. It wants to come to a square like c4, and you want to persecute this pawn, and you have chances of organizing your business onto the queen side. Absolutely. And uh, this is all because of, let's go back, moves like rook c8 and bishop f6. Okay. Boom, boom. Bishop here, snip. And now notice, in contrast, now your rook is tied down to the b2 pawn, and it's the rook that wants to do damage, right, against the king side for, uh, excuse me, against the queen side weaknesses that black has. All right. A little snip-snip happens, and we get a roughly equal position. 
b4, king e6, king e3, f5. Now I think black is he's flirting with danger here because at any point it's a question of like, can white organize some kind of uh, c4 business and or king d3 to c4. Now, general rule of thumb, you don't want to play g3 because that is playing on his side of the board. He's stronger on the king's side. That will create weaknesses, make it easier for him to create a pass pawn. I think here with rook a2, you have still some chances to create a little something something. Is it complicated? Yes, but your rook will be active over there on that side of the board, and you have threats of king d3 and c4. Okay, g3, c5, good move. If we were on a2, we could play rook a6 in that position. And now the game is going to kind of peter out a little bit, and then we're going to get a draw. So, in the end, I guess a fair result. And uh, the several things I hope you got out of that game down, but I just want you to really see that the thing to really remember is the pain that you caused my soul. When you play knight takes c8, have I done it too? Yes. But once you understand the pig, the little dirty pig, it makes a lot of sense what you've given up. It's not just the apparent value of the knight on b6. It's like, oh, there was all that energy that we lost in taking the thing. And of course, would it have been hard to simply retreat? Yes, it would have been psychologically hard, but once you just consider how terrible that bishop on c8 is and how much energy you know, we could save ourselves here, we're gonna do it. Let's mention knight a4 here. I'd rather see that as well. Okay, so till next time, enjoy the pig. Bye-bye.